Okay, here is another problem with the momentum principle. Uh, so I have a basketball, and I, I want to draw... No, it looks like this. I was going to... Yeah, there's my basketball. So put the lines in there. It looks like a basketball now. So it's a flat basketball. I just made that up just for fun. So the flat basketball comes, and it hits the ground. It's falling, and it hits the ground, and it just stops because it, like, it, like, deflates. Like, I'm getting a... Think of it like a, a squishy ball, right? When it hits, it, it deflates. And so when it deflates a little bit and stops, so it doesn't bounce, that's the key thing, it doesn't bounce, it moves the distance D. So the question is, what's the average force on the ball during this time? Now, if you're thinking about this, you said you should say, okay, well, and I said, uh, let's ignore gravity, okay? No, no gravitational force, it is there, but it should be small compared to this force. If not, we can fix that later. So hopefully you're thinking, hey, well, F net, I can do that. F net is the force on the floor. There's only thing pushing on it, pushing this way. And that would be the change in momentum over the change in time. Yes, good point. So I know the mass. I know the initial velocity. I know the final velocity, V2, is going to be 0, 0, 0 meters per second. But I don't know the time. Hmm. Don't know the time. Because I could do that, right? I could calculate the net force on the ball. Delta P, easy to find. It's just going to be M V2 minus V1 over delta T. But I don't know the time interval, so I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, you could estimate the time interval. You could say, well, it's one second, but, but is it one second or is it a tenth of a second? That's a big difference. So let's look at it this way. Let's say that the ball is traveling right here with the velocity V1 and right here with the velocity V0. I can say this, V average equals delta R over delta T. And in fact, I know delta R, right? Delta R is from the center to here is goes seven centimeters. So delta R is gonna be zero, negative 0 0.070 zero meters. So I know that. V average I can get because I know V1 and I know V2. V2 is zero. So V average is just gonna be V1 plus V2 over two. And since V2 is zero, this is just gonna be V1 over two. So now I know that, I can put that in up here and solve for delta T. So delta T is gonna be, um, okay. This is actually, uh, I, you, I, I, I busted here, okay. So I'm gonna write delta T as uh, V average Y Wait, so delta T, I'm sorry. Delta T is going to be delta Y. Ah! Delta T equals delta Y over delta, I mean, V, I'm having problems here, V average Y. Okay, and I did it this way because you can do it for each component of the vectors. You can't take a vector divided by a vector. I couldn't write this as delta R over delta V average because those are two vectors. But I can do the components, right? All the component ratios should have the same time. Uh, and in the x direction and the y direction, there's no change in velocity, so it's boring. So I can write this as delta t equals delta y, which is just gonna be negative d, right? That's how far when the y direction, uh, divided by the average velocity, which is gonna be v1, which is negative 2.3 divided by two. So I'll put the two up there, so that's right. So now I can get delta T. I'm going to put in 0.07. This is get my value for delta T, uh, even though you don't really have to right now. So pull my calculator. Can you see that? So I'm going to put D as, and the negatives cancel. So I get 0.07, two times 2.3 divided by. And you see here, I get a super small time, 0 0.061 seconds. So uh, you couldn't just guess the time. But now I know the time interval, I can put it up there. So I can say F net is gonna be uh, delta P, which is uh, M times V2 is zero. Yeah. So I get negative M V1 over delta T. So that's gonna be negative 0.25 kilograms times V1, uh, which is zero, negative 2.30, divided by 
0.061. So let's put this, the only thing that's gonna survive is the X component, so I get zero for the, I mean the Y component. So the Y component, I get 0.25, 2.3, I'll leave off the negative because it's positive, 2.3 times 0.061 divided by, I get 9.0. Four, three, zero newtons. That's the net force. If I want to find the force from the ground, I would have to do this, right? Here is my floor, F floor, and then I have the gravitational force, Mg. So this is actually equal to F floor plus Mg where g is the vector negative 9.8 in the y directions. So if I add that to both sides, I get the force on the floor. And let's do that. F floor is gonna be 0.25 times the vector zero negative, to move it to the side, it's gonna be negative. Negative 9.8, zero, plus this, zero, 9.43, zero. So if I do that, all I have to do is the y direction, and I get, I got that in there already, I get 9.8 enter 0.25 times plus. And I get 0, 11.90 0 Newton. So this answer of, of uh, where'd I put it? Right here isn't bad, okay? This answer is a little bit better. Uh, if, imagine if the Time, the distance compressed was just two centimeters. That's gonna make this time interval much, much shorter. It's gonna make this force much larger. And then this uh, gravitational force is even more insignificant. But there you go. Force on a basketball colliding with the floor.